The way that prokaryotic cells, such as bacterial cells, regulate gene expression is by using these units of DNA we call operons. Now, we already spoke about the LAC operon, and we said that generally speaking, an operon is this segment of DNA that not only contains the special structural genes that are needed to produce some type of enzyme or enzymes, but it also contains other important segments of DNA, such as the operator section and the promoter section. Now, in this lecture, we're going to focus on a type of operon that is used by bacterial cells in anabolic processes. Now an anabolic process is simply a process in which we synthesize some type of molecule that is needed by the cell, by the bacterial cell. And the type of operon we're going to focus on is a repressible operon. Now a specific example of a repressible operon used by bacterial cells is a tryptophan operon. So what exactly is a repressible operon? Well, a repressible operon is the most common type of operon used by bacterial cells in anabolic processes, and a repressible operon is usually on, but sometimes under, circum under certain circumstances, it can be turned off as we'll see in just a moment. So a tryptophan operon is an operon that is used by bacterial cells to basically regulate the synthesis of the tryptophan amino acid. So let's take a look at the of, uh, let's take a look at the different components of the tryptophan operon. So notice that the tryptophan operon contains the blue section and that is the promoter section. Now, the promoter section is important because this is where the RNA polymerase binds to. So when the RNA polymerase approaches the promoter, it binds onto the promoter, and if there's nothing bound to the operator, that RNA polymerase can move along the structural genes and synthesize the mRNA molecule that is needed to create the enzymes that are involved in synthesizing the tryptophan amino acids. So for the case of the tryptophan operon, there are five structural genes that code four different enzymes needed to synthesize the tryptophan amino acid. Now let's take a look at the operator. So what is the purpose of the operator? So the operator is the segment of this operon to which a repressive protein in its active form binds to. Now, what exactly is a repressive protein? Well, the repressive protein is what this operon actually uses to turn off the expression of these genes. So notice upstream, so to this side of the promoter, we have this red gene known as the repressor gene. And this repressor gene is also part of this operon. That repressor gene basically codes for an inactive, so not an active, repressor protein. And to activate that inactive repressor protein so that it can bind onto the operator segment, a special thing must happen. Tryptophan must bind onto the inactive form of that repressor protein to activate it, and only then will that repressor protein bind onto the operator and inhibit the expression of these genes, and therefore inhibit the expression, the formation of tryptophan. So let's look at the two cases when our operon is on and when the operon is off. So let's begin with A. So let's suppose inside the cell we have very little tryptophan present and this is usually the case. So usually we have a low intracellular concentration of, trypto of, of uh, tryptophan. So inside the cell we have a relatively low amount of tryptophan. Now, what exactly will that mean? Well, if we have a low amount of tryptophan inside the cell, then our inactive repressive protein will remain inactive because there isn't enough tryptophan to actually bind onto the allosteric side of this inactive repressive protein to activate it. So usually what happens is this gene is expressed to produce the repressor mRNA and then that mRNA is used to form the inactive repressor protein. 
And because we don't have enough, we don't have a lot of tryptophan in our cell, the tryptophan will not bind to this protein, it will not activate it, and so nothing will bind to the operator section and nothing will block the transcription of these genes. And what that means is the RNA polymerase will easily bind onto the promoter section, the blue section, it will move along these five structural genes, it will produce the mRNA and then the mRNA will be used by the ribosomes to produce the enzymes and then the enzymes will be used to produce the tryptophan amino acid. So this is usually what is happening within the cell because the cell is usually continually producing the tryptophan that is needed to produce the many different proteins, uh, proteins and enzymes that are found within the cell. Now, what happens when the concentration of tryptophan rises? Now, let's suppose there is a very high intracellular concentration inside that cell. So, the tryptophan concentration inside is very high. In this case, because we do have a lot of the tryptophan molecules, we have an excess of these tryptophan molecules floating around in the cell, some of these tryptophan molecules will act as a co-repressor, they will bind onto the allosteric side of that inactive repressor protein and that will activate the protein by changing its three-dimensional shape and now the active form of this repressor protein will go on and bind onto the operator section, the green section of the operon. And once bound, that will basically inhibit, that will block RNA polymerase from actually transcribing these five genes. And so in this case, when we have a high concentration of tryptophan inside the cell, we're not going to produce any mRNA molecules and so we will not synthesize synthesize these enzymes and will not synthesize the tryptophan and that makes sense. Because if inside the cells we have a lot of tryptophan, the, that bacterial cell wants to conserve as much energy as possible and so there's no need to form the tryptophan because the cell already has a high amount of tryptophan inside. But if the tryptophan concentration is low as the case is in part A, then what happens is we need to form more tryptophan so that, so that the cell can function properly and effectively so that the cell can form the many different proteins and enzymes that require this tryptophan amino acid. And so what will happen is our operon will be turned on because this inactive repressor protein will remain in its inactive form. It will not bind to the tryptophan because we will not have enough tryptophan inside that cell. So this is what we mean by a repressible operon. So a repressible operon is the most common type of operon that is used by bacterial cells when it comes to anabolic processes, processes in which we have to synthesize some type of important molecule. In the case of the tryptophan operon, it's the tryptophan amino acid that we have to synthesize. Now, for a repressible operon, usually this is what we have case A. So usually the repressible operon is turned on because we need to continually synthesize that biomolecule, in this case the tryptophan amino acid. But if we actually get a high concentration of this molecule, only then will that molecule act as a co-repressor, bind onto this repressor protein, activating it, and then that active form of the repressor protein will move onto the operator section and block the transcription of these genes. And so in this case, the operon is said to be off.